go. So in summation, I want to make sure that this is easy to read, so I'm going to give you the factors that will increase demand altogether first. So we can just call this factors to increase demand or to increase the level of demand. In other words, we're picking up this curve, we are sliding it to the right, and we are leaving it there. All right, so our first factor would be an increase in income. And again, that's for normal goods. Our second factor would be an increase in the price of a substitute. Or the decrease in the price of a complement. Because remember, substitutes are interchangeable. Complements are goods that you tend to buy, buy together. Substitutes more expensive, you switch to this. Complements less expensive, you switch, you, or you uh, buy more of this automatically because you're buying at the same time. Third one, an increase in confidence. And here we're talking about consumer confidence because we're on the consumer or the demand side of the market. That's a D and not a P, sorry about that. I don't want to get all of these confused in one place. And the fourth one would be an increase in desire based on the change in preference. So we can just call that an increase in preference for this particular good. Okay. So you can look at which ones have a direct relationship. If these things increase, demand increases, versus an inverse relationship, meaning if this decreases, demand increases. So all of these things together will increase demand. So let's look at the other direction. Pulling all these together, again, B, Q, downward sloping demand, what are factors that will decrease demand or decrease the level of demand? Number one, a decrease in income. And again, we're talking about normal goods because most products are normal for most people. And if we're decreasing demand, we are picking the curve up. Sorry, that should be parallel. It's a little bit off. Picking the curve up and sliding it left towards zero. So a decrease in income is the first one. If we decrease the price of a substitute, then that means that people will buy the substitute and not our product. If we increase the price of a complement, And that means you're buying less of this, so you buy less of this. Lower quantity demand of a complement, lower demand for the other good. Number three, if we have a decrease in consumer confidence, meaning, for example, that you think you're going to lose your job, or your house, or your health insurance, or the economy's doing badly, that would lead you to maybe conserve with your money a little bit more, not spend as much. And the last one would be a decrease in preference. Meaning, for example, that something goes out of style and you wouldn't be caught dead wearing it. And again, we see a direct relationship with most of them and an inverse relationship with the price of complement. So all of these things will decrease demand. The opposite changes will increase it. If I were you, I would not try to memorize this because it's a lot of detail to hold in your brain. 
what I would do is learn how this works so that when you see it on a test, it becomes common sense. That's the best thing you can do, because memorizing arrows going all over the place is going to take too much of your time. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this stuff.